can you tell the viewers, since you probably know more about it than I do, about the game Among Us? Tell them what the game Among Us is about. Just in a one sentence summary, what is it about? Why? But why? Can we answer that next time? Because this is what we produce as the Pythagorean Theorem. This is the Pythagorean Theorem. Oh. Lecture of General Relativity. I'm your host, Rita Bari, graduate student in physics at Brown University. And my name is Shibuno Aj Barry, and I'm doing my bachelor's in math and physics at NYU. And today we're going to be discussing contravariant and covariant vectors, which are the two basic ingredients of tensor transformations in GR. So are you ready to take a look? Uh-huh. All right, so let's start by summarizing what the heck did we do last time? So, we essentially define the notion of a tensor. So, a tensor can have a rank 0, 1, 2, etc. So, a rank 0 tensor can essentially be imagined as a scalar, it's just one value. You don't need any indices to specify what you want to extract out of it. Okay. Rank 1 tensors are also known as vectors. and they're kind of like arrays in coding, if you okay. do that kind of stuff. So, you need one index to specify what you want to get out of it. So, for example, you want to get five out of this array. You need to specify zero, one, two, three, four. So, we write an element of this as A with the index as a subscript, mu. Then a rank 2 would be a matrix, kind of like an array of rays, so, or a vector of vectors, where we get 3, 5, 7, for example, 2, 6, 4, 1, 3. This is an example of a matrix. You need to specify what row you want. So do you want this row, this row, or this row? And then what column you want? You want this column, this column, or this column. And only then can you specify a specific element. So you need two indices to specify what you want out of this one. And the tensor is extending that concept of scalar vector matrix to n. So mm -hmm. this just goes on and on, and that is the concept of the tensor, which we talked about yesterday. So, Rifat, can you continue on? The two different types of tensor transformations, okay? So, before I get into them, can you tell the viewers, since you probably know more about it than I do, about the game Among Us? Tell them what the game Among Us is about. Just in a one-sentence summary, what is it about? Why? Well, it's about players who pretend to be something that they're not, right? Uh-huh. Okay, now, in general relativity, we can have manifolds that pretend to be something that they're not. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say that you have a sheet of paper, okay? This is a sheet of paper, right? Does this look flat to you? Looks pretty flat to Looks me. pretty flat, right. In fact, a sheet of paper is the flattest you can get, right? Mm -hmm. But what if you have a kind of strange coordinate system where your coordinate bases are curved? So maybe this is your, maybe this is your y coordinates. I'll denote them with x2 equals 1, x2 equals 2, x2 equals 3. And maybe these are your x coordinates. Mm. Okay? So this is x1 is 1, x1 is 2, x1 is 3. X, x1 and x2 are just another yeah. way to write x and y. So... This is a pretty deceiving coordinate system. If you work in this coordinate basis, you would think that this space is curved, when in fact you know that this is a flat sheet of paper, Wait. right? Yes. So does that mean that the coordinate system we're using is weird, or does that just mean that our manifold is locally flat? Ah, so our coordinate system is weird. In reality, this is just a flat sheet of paper, right? In other words, in this coordinate basis, x1, x2, we have a curved space-time manifold. How can we express that? that? Well, let me write it down first. How can we express this? We can express this as ds squared mm -hmm. is equal to the metric that defines this interval, 
in terms of this coordinate system and then dxm dxn okay now you just asked me what's the point of doing that right yeah. the point is that we're confused imagine that we're like little bugs roaming around on the surface of this plane we don't know at first sight what coordinate system to use so we, maybe we just pick two random orthogonal bases and there's no chance we'll pick the right ones but i have a question uh, go ahead obviously we have a notion of what it means for two straight lines to be to orthogonal. orthogonal but what does it mean for two curves to be orthogonal does it mean that their tangent lines just have to be orthogonal at the place where they meet that's a good question and the answer is i don't know and we won't be needing that but a good taste of the answer comes from spherical coordinates for example the earth on the earth we have latitude and longitude right here yeah. clearly the definition of orthogonal is different so for the earth we use three coordinates right because it's a 3d system we use dr d theta and d phi okay and so here that's what it looks like for the bases to be orthogonal dr is going in this direction d theta is going in uh, this direction and d so phi is going in this lines. direction that's right so anyway back to our idea this is ds squared on this paper if we use the bad kind of basis right but if we can find a coordinate transformation if we can be smart enough to find a coordinate transformation from x to y that changes this from a curved kind of a, a paper to a flat sheet of paper then we have succeeded what bases tell me what bases will transform this manifold into a flat sheet of paper hmm. Wouldn't that just be 0, 1 and 1, 0? Exactly. The Cartesian coordinate bases, right? I had and J had. So in other words, if we can find that golden coordinate transformation, then we can go from this fake system, this complicated system, to this space-time interval. So all we're saying is we want essentially so all we're saying is we want essentially a transformation to map us from whatever stupid metric that we have here which is curve to a flat Minkowski space-time so Minkowski space-time is a little bit more advanced than just flat space-time but that's the idea that's the idea now here can you tell me what this looks like. This is something that you've seen many times before, believe it or not. Can you tell me what this looks like? This is the Pythagorean theorem in disguise. Really? Okay. Now that I've told you this is the Pythagorean theorem, can you decode how this is the Pythagorean theorem? We see repeated indices like M and N that indicates a summation over those indices, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to sum over oh. the indices N, sum over the indices N, and nice. then this right here Delta M and what is that? If not, just an identity matrix. Right. And it's the just only, I. and the thing is these That's right. are only these only exist when M and N are equal because otherwise That's right. we're off diagonal. That's so right. So just get zero. So we're just going from zero to three. So for our four we're just going from M equals zero to three and N equals zero to three for our four coordinates, right? For time and the three spatial dimensions. So now we just go ahead and write this down, dym, dyn, and look, do you want to write down what this gives us? Just write down the Pythagorean theorem. All right, shouldn't this... If you just... want, you don't even have to include time, just include the spatial dimensions. No, it's okay. So wouldn't this give us okay. dt squared plus dx squared, or dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared? That's absolutely right. Now, of course, we know in Minkowski space time, there, this comes with a minus sign, right? Why? But that is because of the speed of light being the limiting speed for any particle with mass. But sticking to what we have here, in this simple, ordinary, flat sheet of paper, this is the simplest metric we can have, right? That's the metric of the identity matrix.
right? So now we can ask a very simple question. This is the end of the lecture. Now oh, we can really? ask a very simple question. This is the question we're going to end on, okay? The question is, given a metric, given a metric G sub mn of x, mm -hmm. is there a coordinate transformation from a basis x to a basis y that takes us from a space-time interval given by ds squared g m n x x dx m dx n to instead of this kind of arbitrary metric can we go to an identity matrix I think so. okay so can we take this to ds squared is equal to delta m n y our new metric if we can do this then that means we have a flat manifold a flat manifold with no curves or holes or any wacky stuff so all we need to do is just take our curved metric and multiply it by some transformation to make it the identity right well if if yeah. we can do that that means we are in flat flat space time i think this can be true what no it sounds like no oh wait it like oh you, so you, mean you like think it can be true, true. Yeah, this is true if we have a flat sheet of paper or a flat manifold. But why? Can we answer that next time? Because this is what reproduces the Pythagorean theorem. Oh, this is the Pythagorean theorem. If I it's see. not the Pythagorean theorem, then you have to make a correction. For example, if you have Pythagoras' theorem, a squared plus b squared is c squared. But in general, for arbitrary triangles, there's a small correction, right? So, if you have flat space time, then you just have this identity matrix as your metric. Otherwise, you have to make a small correction. Understood. And next time, we're going to find out how we can make those transformations and corrections. So, thank you for taking me along with this ride, and we'll see you next time.